yo, yo, what do you do, everybody? It's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. I'm back at it again, you guys, man. Welcome back, everyone, to the 1130 podcast, Talk Pro Wrestling. Uh, what's good, everybody doing out there, man? Yo, it's time to talk some pro wrestling, man. I'm excited. You know what time it is, man. It's not 730. It's 1130, man. Yes, use the hashtag, uh, the 1130 podcast, and also Talk Pro Wrestling. Yo, Got a great show lined up this week on Talk Pro Wrestling, man. But before I get into the show, thank everyone for tuning in. Everyone who's watching, man, here on YouTube. If you're new to the show, you're new to the podcast, definitely hit that like button down below. Smash that subscribe button. Like it, like I said, leave a comment. In and uh, don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, like I said, man, uh, it's time to talk some pro wrestling. Man, we're going to be chatting on the latest that's been going down in the world of pro wrestling, man. For real. Yo, we're going to get into it, man. I'm actually trying to get everything uh, together and get the graphics going, man. That's why I'm kind of like stalling, though. But uh, nonetheless, okay, you guys, we're going to get into it. Our first topic, man. Yo, I know we're on the road to WrestleMania, and there's a lot of things heating up, man. And uh, they're going to be in SoFi Stadium in L.A. Huge crowd, huge record of, a, you know, a tickets has been sold. And it was like one guy who made their debut, well, who made their return back to WWE uh, late last year. And it was actually at Extreme Rules. Some of you guys may know who I'm talking about. Yes, I'm talking about, well, uh, this guy, you guys. Yes, Bray Wyatt, you guys. Yes, Bray Wyatt. Man, he, he's nowhere to be found, man. I, I got to say this is one of the biggest letdowns in, in, in recent, you know, memories. And maybe he still got something up to sleeve. Maybe it's something personal that he's taking some time off. He wasn't seen at this past week's, uh, this past weekend's, uh, yeah, this past, yeah, this past weekend's uh, WWE uh, Big House Show in Madison Square Garden that they do a couple of times every year. And the creative have no plans for Bray Wyatt, though. Now, to hear that, and yeah, I know it's out there. It could be rumors, hearsay, dare say, or whatever the case may be. But you guys, man, like Bray Wyatt, man, his return back to WWE at Extreme Rules, man, after not seeing him for a long time. And I think prior to seeing him, the last matchup we did see him at was at WrestleMania, uh, I believe taking it on Randy Orton and that whole Alexa Bliss, you know, saga or whatnot. And of course, we haven't seen Alexa Bliss, you know, in some time too. But, you know, Bray Wyatt, though, um, man, you know, with everything, everybody want to know what was this, you know, formation that Bray Wyatt had, uh, uh, this formation that Bray Wyatt created, you know, when he came back and seen the real life fi Firefly. Funhouse characters, let me get it right, and you start seeing uh, different vignettes, and oh, it's Uncle Howdy, and, and just some of these mysterious things that have uh, been going on for some time, and I mean, <laughs> the pitch black match, I don't know, I, you know, some of you, most of you guys feel out there on how Bray Wyatt and oh, how this pitch black matchup was presented. To all the fans at WWE and uh, at, at this event at the Royal Rumble, you know, because it was made on that Friday Night SmackDown. They threw me for a loop that Bray Wyatt, you know, um, said he was going to go out to Brock Lesnar and he was going to go out to Bobby Lashley, you know, the night before, I believe, what, the Royal Rumble? No, no, no. Uh, no, Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber, yeah, the night before Elimination Chamber, he said, okay, man, I'm going to go after, um, you know, Brock Lesnar or I'm going to go after Bobby Lashley. And uh, Extreme Rules came because my old predictions for that was that that match was going to end in a DQ, in which, you know, it, it did. It ended in a DQ, but it was seemed like it was just cut off. Like Brock and Bobby, you know, that, you know, that, that, it just finished abruptly <laughs> and it was like Bray Wyatt was gonna you know come in but hearing that they pitched also Bray Wyatt to Brock Lesnar and he turned it down and, Bray, and Brock Lesnar accepted the challenge or you know throughout the challenge to Omos or whatnot so 
you know, what was going on with that is that. But Bray Wyatt, man, have not seen him in some time. And the fact that, you know, no creative plans has, you know, even came up, you know, for, for Bray Wyatt. Maybe he may have a spot. Maybe he may do something theatrical um, at WrestleMania. We just don't know. It's all speculation, though. But Bray Wyatt, no plans for him uh for, for for wrestlemania and i think a lot of people were very very excited man hell my little man out there he he was excited <laughs> even though he was like you know some months when gray Wyatt, you know came back but uh man just i think man i, I don't know the whole uncle howdy thing is just you know i, I don't know I, I don't know i don't know the whole bobby lashley going to versus uncle I, I i really don't know not a not one bit <laughs> not one bit you guys for real but one thing i do know one thing i do know you guys that uh today that i'm recording this, this is thursday you guys obviously this comes out on friday Happy friday to everyone but uh it's 316 day and of course i had a couple of guests that i was going to chat with them and also give them their thoughts on not only 316 day, but they favorite Stone Cold Steve Austin moment, man. You know, throw up some Steve Wisers. What? I said throw up some Steve Wisers. What? <laughs> you know, 316 day, man. Give it up to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, I know one awkward 316 day was uh 316 day in 2020, man, where Stone Cold, man, had to come out there the week and, and it was the week prior was the last Monday Night Raw in Washington, D.C. And the next week, because of the pandemic, it shut down everything. And they went to the Performance Center and started doing everything. So the that week that it was 316 day, Stone Cold had to go out there, man, with no crowd and do his stick. Never before like that. I think it was it was rough watching. And obviously, you know, getting uh, uh, Byron Saxton in it and commentary in it a little bit, but... Boy, oh boy, I'm pretty sure, you know, looking back at it, it would have been great having Stone Cold in Washington, D.C., that last Raw, you know, uh, going into that pandemic, you know, knowing that he got to come out there with no crowd. But, man, oh, man, yeah, 316 day, man, Stone Cold Steve Austin, this is my guy, man, big, big Stone Cold fan. Uh, I got to ask you guys, man, what are some of your favorite uh 316 moments, man. Favorite uh, Stone Cold moment. Uh, I know a lot of people would say uh, the beer bash with the McMahons. I know a lot of people would say, you know, the whole McMahon saga or his rivalries, you know, with The Rock at WrestleMania or, you know, uh, 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 the the store uh, brawl between Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and Booker T. Like, what? You want milk? <laughs> like, oh, man, just putting him up on a little cash register, up on a little junk. Like, yeah, about to check out with his ass. <laughs> like, oh, man. Like, but Austin 316, man, has so many great moments, man, throughout his career. Uh, I love the time where WWE were experimenting or, or doing these things with mainstream artists uh, with the albums and stuff. And Disturbia, man, Disturbia was it, man. Disturbia was it. And I hope I'm saying their name right, man. Glass Shattered. Bro, that was the song, man. And it was on, actually, it was on Forcible Entry. I bought that joke. Yes, Disturbia actually did that, but it was a Forcible Entry. And I love when Stone Cold came to the radio that joke, man. That was it. That, that was it. Like, it, yeah, man. I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, an, Another thing. Uh, Obviously, uh, the moment with Stone Cold and The Rock uh, had they sing off in the middle of the ring, and you can't really find it on WWE Network or Peacock, because I guess they didn't have the rights to that song, it just aired live, you can catch it on, you can find it on YouTube or whatnot, but yo, man, <laughs> it was, it, it was awesome, so I, I definitely love it, man, big fan of Stone Cold, I love that he came back for one match uh, last year at WrestleMania, taking on, uh, Never stop fighting, man. I'll never give it. Not, I'm going to say never giving up. That's John Cena thing. Keep on fighting. That's what it is from KO. So, um, yeah, man, that was awesome. You know, Stone Cold always said, man, I would never come out of retirement unless it's for the right thing or the right story. And I didn't feel like Kevin Owens, you know, that, that was a legit story. It was just like, you know, I'm going to call you out. He had more story going on with Seth Rollins than he actually did with Stone Cold. You feel me? So, 
But hey, man, um, Stone Cold coming out there doing his thing for the KO show and having the matchup main eventing night one. And you guys, man, we all heard big, big, big speculations, man, that this guy right here, yeah, this guy right here, let me talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> L.A. Knight, man, L.A. Knight, boy, man, this guy is on fire, had a fantastic matchup this past week on Monday Night Raw with Cody Rhodes, and uh, um, it's been pitched, it's been going around, it's been circling around, and it's not been confirmed yet, we're about two weeks away from WrestleMania, about a little under three weeks uh, from WrestleMania, and it's been speculation that L.A. Night, man. Yeah, I said L.A. Night, man. Let me talk to you. Uh, it, it's possibly, possibly, is going to um, face Stone Cold Steve Austin at a WrestleMania. Man, like, you guys, man, like, you, you, come on, though. I mean, this guy has, like, haven't been on the main roster more than a year. Uh, he been doing his thing down in NXT. Wasn't down there that long. He had the fantastic rivalry with uh, Cameron Grimes, which we haven't seen him in some time in a while, too, as I, you know, just think about it. But Cameron Grimes and also with Ted DiBiase with the Million Dollar Championship. So, man, like, you guys, man, I mean, I want to ask, I don't even know should I ask this question. Like, what is it? I know what is it. This guy just got it. I talked about it numerous of times how this guy was on the hero and, you know, learning from the rock and being under, you know, the rock for some time. And, man, just being around the business. He's been an extra for the company. You can go back and find it on YouTube. Man, just like L.A. Knight got it, and he is the future. I mean, my guy's like 40 years old. I mean, you know, around that time. Your career is sort of winding down in, in the wrestling business, in any, you know, sports, you know, business, athletic, you know, wise, you know, it's kind of like winding down. Your career is winding down. So I think, man, they know that L.A. Knight got it. And the whole, yeah, let me talk to you, man, is taking it, it, it's, it's taking over slowly but shortly, man. It's the new what. And for real, for real, we all tired of the what. I mean, it, I mean, one of the most prestigious and awesome times in history of our business, you know, the attitude era, and right after that was the ruthless aggression era, so, you know, uh, I think the promo battles itself, you know, is going to be marvelous, so if Stone Cold don't take on, if they don't announce it, it's probably going to be something like more so how they did last year, where LA Knight come out there, does a stick, man, I ain't got a match. That put me up in Bray, you know, do all this thing, and Stone Cold come out there and challenge to a match, and then you Stone Cold, you know, open up a can of whoop ass on LA night, man. I think that's that's exactly uh how it's gonna go, man. But yo, I, I I'm I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled to hear about LA night. Um, possibly sharing the ring with a legend like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You've seen him share the ring with a legend in The Undertaker in, in Raw 30, you know, like man, like Come on, man. Come on. And when I say when they do stuff like this and put you in certain situations, when the company, when the machine um, get behind you and put you in, you know, these certain situations, man, it's nothing, man. This Man, come on, man. The sky is the limit, bro. The sky is the limit, man. You just got to perform and do your thing. And I, I'm going to keep saying it. And sometime from now, everybody going to look back at it and be like, yo, you was right, man. Yes, L.A. Knight is, is he got that rock. Stone Cold, like, you know, but he's L.A. Knight. He's not the next Stone Cold, the next Rock. But, man, when he get on the mic and you can tell and just a little bit of his selling, if you watch Stone Cold, you watch The Rock and also the promos, you will understand what I'm talking about. Trust me, I tell you, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Yo, man, we're going to move on here on the 1130 Podcast. Speaking of WrestleMania, you guys, yes, WrestleMania weekend it's the WWE Hall of Fame and this year first inductee of the 2023 WWE Hall of Fame, you guys, is none other than the 619 le Legendary Luchador. I didn't know which one I wanted to say first. I was trying to say both of them, Legendary and Luchador. Uh, Ray Mysterio, man, yo, when this popped up on the screen uh, last Friday night, yo, man, I was like, wow. 
it's like man all your all, all your all your uh childhood uh guys that you watched growing up and Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, Undertaker, you know, just all these legendary names, especially lately, are going into the Hall of Fame, man. Randy gone into the Hall of Fame. There's nothing else for Rey Mysterio to do. He celebrated 20 years of being in the WWE last year on Monday Night Raw. And we have been seeing over the last uh, couple of years that Rey Mysterio uh, has came back to action and came back to WWE. He brought along his son, Dominic. Yes, you guys, he brought along his son, Dominic Mysterio, which everyone, man, was like, yo, this guy is green, man. This guy is green. He need to go down to NXT, man. Like, and, and, and to be real with you, if Rey Mysterio wasn't his father, oh, trust and believe, he would have went down to NXT. But since Rey Mysterio is his father, he want to learn and sort of, you know, train him. At the same time, while he learned it under his privileges, you know, he didn't want to because, you know, the guys at NXT, the guys and girls at NXT, they all under one location in a way. I mean, majority of them may, you know, stay in Florida because uh, all the house shows are in Florida. NXT isn't, you know, in Florida. So it's pretty the same people who come to the shows each and every week at that NXT jump. So giving Dominic this big experience such as being on the road you're seeing different people you're in different cities different towns each and every week you're on shows saturday sunday for, you know like different shows man so him giving them that especially you know i, I think for ray mysterio kind of like um gave him a uh gave him some breathing room because knowing that his son was gonna you know follow in his footsteps and come in wwe you know, I, I figured that's why, you know, he was on the main roster. But uh, boy, oh boy, but before this whole uh, judgment thing, judgment day thing between uh, with uh, Dominic Mysterio and, you know, Rhea Ripley fan and, and, and uh, Priest, I mean, Dom Dom was a little was a little lost. And the whole thing with his father was OK. You know, seeing father, first time father and son tag team champs, I thought that was, you know, awesome. I mean, come on, you don't really get to see that. You know, you've seen some guys work with their fathers. You've seen Rock, Rock work with, with his father. You know, uh, Rocky, Rocky Johnson. You've seen Randy Orton in a way work with, work, well, not in a way, but he did work with his father. Yeah, sort of in a way, um, not necessarily one on one, but you know, managing or just Wolf and the Rocks position. I think they were a tag team. For, for a hot moment or so but i think this is awesome man you know and the whole storyline that my man dom down with the prison but actually was his only in jail for a couple of nights <laughs> i mean not even a couple of nights a couple of hours though a couple of hours and now he walking around with a teardrop and he's just supposed to be so hard and man if you say another word i'm gonna do you like uh i did the guys in, in the clink man like it's, it's it's so entertaining man and i'm definitely love it it's it's a character it's something that you can latch on with Dominic Mysterio, because before then, to be honest with you, nobody gave a shit about Dominic. Nobody cared about Dominic. Come on. I mean, Priest, he's the big man. He was just down in uh, NXT. Prior to that, he was what, teaming with Bad Bunny at WrestleMania. So everybody was like, man, Bad Bunny stole the spotlight from Priest in his first Mania. And then Finn, he just came back up from NXT after being NXT champion. So it was like, what's new with Finn? And obviously, Rhea Ripley. Mommy, man, just, you know, just been killing it and been, you know, grinding on the main roster, you guys, though. But, uh, yeah, yo, Dom Dom, man, uh, I'm loving everything that's going on. Kind of like went all around the world with that. Uh, but it, it's been thrown out that Rey Mysterio challenged his son, man. Uh, challenged his son. Uh, Rey, Dom and Dom challenged his father. I'm sorry. Challenged his father. Uh, Ray Mysterio last week on SmackDown. We're going to see what happens this week on SmackDown. And we, we saw what happened on Monday Night Raw, how he grilled them and how he sort of, you know, trash talked them. And like, you were never there. You know, this Hall of Fame. Are you glad you got this Hall of Fame? You know, you missed all these birthdays and you, 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 you didn't, you know, you wouldn't have been a, a dad to me. And, you know, all these uh, horrible things. That you could say to your dad or, or someone would think of to say to their dad. 
Dominic said to his dad, Ray Mysterio, uh, on Monday night. And it's been seen on Friday, Friday Night Smackdown last week that a seeming, uh, well, not seeming, we seen last week that uh, Santos is also getting the rub from Ray Mysterio. You know, Santos is also, uh, you know, from Mexico and stuff. So I think that is awesome, man. Also, so is uh, Ryo Mendoza. I'm pretty sure you go about another name right now. But, yo, man, I, I'm digging this. I'm digging where this is going. And I love that uh, they didn't announce or didn't um, play play with this match early on. And when I mean play with this match, I mean, like, throw it out there early on in the way. I love how this story was building up for months and months and, and months, you guys. Man, this story, uh, what was it? Uh Thanksgiving, they ruined their Thanksgiving. They ruined, um, they ruined their their Christmas. They ruined their New Year's. Like it was so much things that they kept putting out there on social media over time. And I was just like, it was Valentine's Day, and Dominic and Rhea, you know, having a dinner, and Dom Dom, like he gets spooked out because the cops coming because he he's uh, ex com. He get out of there, so Rhea got to pay for the bill. You know, and, and we seeing Rhea in this these big roles taking on the guys and stuff. So, yo, I'm loving it, man, where it's going. So obviously Ray Mysterio uh is eventually is gonna come out um and, and just go ahead and just accept the challenge to his son, uh Ray Mysterio, which I agree that I which I, I, I agree they should not touch until WrestleMania. I mean, the story is already heavy. Like they, they don't need to. I mean, but they sort of already I mean Ray Mysterio, I mean Dominic already kinda like you know, it's been antagonizing him over and over and over and over again. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. We're going to go. I always say it. I don't know if anybody remember, but I'm pretty sure you guys do. If, if you don't, WWE uh, will not let you forget in a way <laughs> some things. But uh, uh, WrestleMania 21 in L.A., you guys, the opening match was Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. They killed it. I believe this year's at WrestleMania 39, the opening match should be uh, Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio, and they should kill it, man. It's going to be a matchup that people just was like, you know, I think this is really going to get Dominic over over the, the hump that, you know, he, he, he need, you know, but man, oh, man. Shout out to, once again, Rey Mysterio for coming the first inductee in the 2023 WWE uh, Hall of Fame. Another guy, you guys. Yes, another gentleman that is also, that is also, let me get it right. Hopefully, I got it up here. Um, Another gentleman. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Okay, we got it right here. Another gentleman, you guys. Uh, The Great Muda. It was announced this past Wednesday on WWE's The Bump that he is the second inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame, you guys. Yes. The great Muda recently, um, you know, hanged up his boots and stuff. So, yo, man, this is going to be awesome. They are in L.A., so it's going to be a big, big, massive Latino fan base there. We seen it at the at the, with the kickoff little pre party show back in I believe it was August. I mean, excuse me, not August, but October or November. You know, so it, it, it's going to be great, man. It is really going going to be uh, great. So WrestleMania is coming up, man. I am definitely excited. Speaking of WrestleMania, speaking of WrestleMania, as we're talking about WrestleMania, possibly we may see LA Knight. Versus Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania. Uh, man, Rey Mysterio versus Dominic at WrestleMania. It was uh, announced this past week on Monday Night Raw that, you guys, we are going to see this match at WrestleMania, you guys. Yes, it is Edge. Yes, Edge has returned, and he's putting the in to Finn Balor. Now, this, this is a little updated graphic, you know, a little sort of fantasy in a way, but it's definitely a Hell in a Cell match. I don't know if the demon is going to, he mentioned on Monday Night Raw, man, like, hell can't handle my demons. Like, ooh, I was like, okay, all right, I dig it. <laughs> but uh, Finn Balor, will he, you know, fight as the demon? 
and uh, Edge. Will he be rude, Edge? We don't know. But, hey, Edge taking on Finn Balor at WrestleMania, man. I'm freaking excited for that, man. Speaking of freaking, yo, Seth freaking Rollins, baby. Whoa. Okay, yeah, I ain't, I ain't that great at it, though. Man. But that, I love it. I love it, man. Uh, Seth Rollins is going to take it on Logan Paul, which I'm excited for, man. You guys just... You know, matches that have been confirmed for WrestleMania. Um, we seen Damage Control beat up my girl Trish Stratus on Monday Night Raw. I was not excited about that at all, man. Like, that is my girl. I mean, Trish is the number one favorite female, female wrestler of all time. And on male side, you got The Rock. Like, don't mess with neither one of them, though. <laughs> and I was a little upset when they did that to Trish, though. But we got Trish, Lita, and Becky teaming up to take on Bailey. Uh, Dakota Kai and EO Sky of Damage Control. I know EO Sky and Dakota Kai, along with Bailey though as well. But just Dakota and EO are thrilled that they are in this match with Lita and um, Trish Stratus. So man, that is awesome. Oh man, speaking of awesome, we got you guys uh, Austin Theory, which we seen a new entrance from him this week on Monday Night Raw. Hey, and look at that. Look at that. Hey, you better, Jay, you better thank John Cena for that, Austin Theory. <laughs> you better thank John Cena for that one. Oh, oh real, real fast, though, man. Uh, the week prior, John Cena lit a fire on the Austin Theory ass, dr drilled him in the promo, and the week prior, he come out here and he got a new cool intro. Okay. I dig it. <laughs> I dig it, man. WrestleMania is definitely heating up. And The Miz, man. The Miz is, uh, he's the host. He's the host of WrestleMania, man. <laughs> Miz, Miz, Miz. Bianca Belair taking on Oscar, you guys. Yes, that's going to be a great one. And boy, this past Monday night on Raw, seeing Omos. You know, kind of like, you know, over overshadow Brock Lesnar in a way. You've never seen Brock Lesnar sort of get tossed out of the ring uh, and just walk away, let alone someone, you know, who was like that tall. I mean, yeah, we've seen the big show and, you know, but Omos, man, he he, he big, man. Let's let's see what he can do. Let, let, let's see what he can do at uh, WrestleMania, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. A couple of weeks away. And, of course, Rhea, uh, Rhea Ripley taking on Charlotte Flair in the big matchup, you guys. There is everyone talking. Roman Reigns. Yes, the Travel Chief, Roman Reigns, against Cody Rose, you guys. Yes, man. Cody Rose is doing his thing, man. He's on fire. The guy's on fire. He's hot. Everyone loving him, man, for real. His song, his theme song was stuck in my damn head, man, following SmackDown in D.C. a couple of weeks ago. Like, it's still stuck in my head. Oh, whoa. And then the pyros go off. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's, the new, that's the new theme song right there going around. But uh, <laughs> much respect to Cody Rhodes. I know everyone is excited that uh, WWE 2K23 is out right now. And they ain't got to create Cody Rhodes this year around. Because last year, I'm pretty sure he was like the most creative guy in the damn game. But yeah, man, just much respect to Cody Rhodes. Much respect to what, what he's trying to accomplish and uh, what he looked forward to accomplishing um, uh, post-WrestleMania and at WrestleMania, man. So, like, big, big respect to the guy. Um, but what I do want to say, and I've been saying it over some time, man. I've definitely been saying it over some time. Um, I'm still leaning on the Tribal Chief for this matchup between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Now, you guys, uh, would WWE be a fool to uh, have Cody lose? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Would it be smart to have Roman Reigns? Mm, mm, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, though, the way this story is going, man, and Roman Reigns is going to be on Raw this coming Monday night. So it's going to be very interesting. You haven't been on Raw since the whole, uh, the whole Sami Zayn little thing. So this is going to be interesting to see where it goes. I'm still leaning on the Tribal Chief retaining the goal. It's been some TikToks going around. I, I wish I had a video. Uh, <laughs> actually, I probably I'm probably going to edit a video in here um, where it's been going around on, on TikTok and everybody. Um, you know, got this, got these videos where, you know, one, two, three, and the caption is, 
you know, what if this happens at WrestleMania? Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and Roman defeating Cody Rhodes, man. And people faces some, some more than that are shocked. And a few was like, I told you so. But I feel like, man, the the needle mover, the the greatest in 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 a different level, the greatest on a different level <laughs> in God mode, the tribal chief Roman Reigns is gonna walk into his seventh WrestleMania main event. I said seven. I don't, and nobody has done that ever, man. The only person who's come close, the only person I can think of is Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. And I believe Hulk Hogan may have been at WrestleMania 1. He may have been at WrestleMania 2. He may have been at WrestleMania 3. He may have been at... Okay, well, who these guys were... Okay, he may have been at WrestleMania uh, 1. With, he teamed up with Mr. T. They take on Paul Orndorff and um, I forgot who was his tag team partner. Can't even think of it. Roddy Roddy Piper. How did I not? <laughs> Roddy Roddy Piper. Main event number two, I think Hulk Hogan took on, uh, I want to say it was King Kong Bundy in the cage match. In the cage match, I believe, for the WWF Championship. WrestleMania three, Hogan and Andre four, Hogan and uh, Randy Savage. Uh, WrestleMania 5, he didn't main event that one. WrestleMania 6 was in Toronto. So I'm up, I'm up to, I'm up to 5. Yeah, and WrestleMania, uh, 6 was in Toronto. He did that with Ultimate Warrior. Uh, um, WrestleMania 7, he main evented that with Sergeant Slaughter. The 6. The 6. Hulk Hogan only main evented 6 WrestleManias. So for Roman Reigns to surpass them, and I know a lot of people are like, well, The Undertaker is 20-something. Well, The Undertaker hasn't been in 20-something main events, you know, the last match at WrestleMania. So, man, you know, that is, man, come on, man. God mo all the way, man. Give it up to the Tribal Chief, yo, man, for real. So that is dope, man. That is dope. Stone Cold can't say that. The Rock can't say that. Nobody else can. But, uh, but, uh, Roman Reigns, you guys, but uh, that's dope. That is dope. Like I said, you guys, I, I still, I'm, I'm still on the edge between this whole Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes match. You know what's going to happen? Is it going down? You know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like this, this story is just shot on its edges, man. And obviously, we've seen over the last two couple of weeks. When I mean the story is shot on its edges, we seen Jay Uso come back. I talked about it last week and stunned the whole world on one of the dopest endings to a Monday Night Raw in some time. Where Jay Uso came back, brushed off his brother, hugged Sammy, super kicked Sammy, and you know, man, his family over everything, man. And when he threw Jay in the ring, man, it will. It, it was it was something else when he threw Jay in the ring and Jimmy got right on top of him. He said, "Nah, man, this is my meat, like an animal, bro. You know how animals be fighting over their meat, bro, over their food. It was like Jay came in there and was like, mm, man, this is my shit. You feel me? Jay has been. I'm talking about, man. You want to talk about entertainment and talking about putting on the performance? Jay Uso has been putting on a performance. Hell, since 2020, since the whole bloodline." The beginning of it, where Roman and Jay went one on one and had in the cell. So this story is 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 going. I don't know where it's going, but I'm loving it though. Then with the addition to uh, Sami Zayn, we didn't see him on Monday Night Raw because also Kevin. Uh, I mean, uh, well, actually we did. We seen him fight alongside with uh, Cody Rhodes. But Kevin Owens just don't want to team with him. And like I said before, man, I wouldn't want to team with you neither, man. You kind of like, you know, range your big mouth. That was your family. You in the bloodline. Nah, bro. And then not only that, man, I had a big matchup with Stone Cold last year. Now I got to come back this week, this year, and then I'm in a tag team match. I mean, okay. But I'm not really happy, though. I mean, the story is wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But actually, it's really Sami Zayn's story. I'm just add on, you know how the, the credits in the beginning of a movie, you know, is starring the bloodline. Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo Soko, excuse me, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, 
Solo Sokoa and or with Sami Zayn. I mean, excuse me, no, Sami Zayn and or with Kevin Owens. That's what the story was, man. That's the story. So, I mean, I feel like, you know, Kevin Owens, man, like, no, you do that yourself. But, uh, you know, it's going to culminate with those guys are going to team up and give the bloodline a run for their money at uh, at WrestleMania, you guys, man. For real. Yo, man, this has been a, a great show, man. I'm loving it. We're on the road to WrestleMania. And we're not through. Before we wrap it up here, uh, this past Wednesday night, on AEW Dynamite, boy oh boy, the opening of the Dynamite man, that was that was some good shit. I don't know about you guys, but boy, that was some good shit. The four pillars in AEW man, I'm talking about the originals. This wasn't an AEW uh, guy uh, going up against a WWE guy. This wasn't two WWE guys going up against each other. This was all four originals, starting with the M- AEW world champion MJF and I was talking to my good buddy Warren Marlowe a couple of weeks ago on who you think would be a good champ a good challenger for MJF's championship and the first person I said was Darby Allen you know I mean excuse me (laughs) not Darby Allen was uh Jungle Boy Jungle Boy would be a you know a great one won this match at a at Revolution and stuff, and as well as Hangman, because uh, Warren Marlowe said Hangman, but it seemed like Hangman's still busy doing some other things. But this one right here, you guys, the start of the show with MJF come out there. They're in Canada, so I'm not too familiar, but I'm not too I'm not too sure. I'm not gonna say no wrong words. I don't know what it was though, but you know, it, it seemed like he was doing a little bit musical chairs, but with one chair almost had his ass up in the air and almost dropped him. But, uh, man, but, yeah, every guy came out there, man, and said what they had to say, man, for real. MJF was really throwing a celebration uh, on AEW uh, Dynamite, which was a really awesome. But, yeah, everybody out there, man, came out there, had a mic, said what they had to say. Um, From Jungle Boy saying what he had to say, man, some guys will probably get 60 minutes on the show. Uh. Come on, Darby. Darby said it all. Jungle Boy, he did it. I'm thinking I'm getting these names mixed up. <laughs> uh, also, Sammy Guevara, people, you know, was listening to him, but they weren't giving a shit about Sammy. They weren't giving a shit about Sammy. They were still booing him throughout all the his whole story. They was like, yeah, okay, boo. But I'm loving this, man, and this should be an incredible matchup. Will this be a fatal four-way? Will MJF? Send these three guys through hoops as he always do his challengers. Will Will Darby have to take on uh, a Jungle Boy and um, Sammy Guevara, and the winner takes on MJF? But MJF says, "Okay, so you the winner. Okay, cool. You got to run through more hoops to see if you can beat me, or, or whatever the case was." So you never know. But I'm loving this right here. The four pillars of AEW and how it opened up the show uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, on Dynamite, it was awesome, man. Dynamite was definitely dope, definitely dope. Uh, we seen uh, Tara Valor- Val- Valerie. I'm saying her name probably so wrong. She was in NXT. I can't think of her name. She was also in Impact Wrestling, too. I think her contract ex- expired. And so she came over to AEW, man. So hopefully she could give uh, give uh, Jay Cargill some run for her money, man. <laughs> For real, she's been champ for a while, so, like, let's go. Come on, that, that match did not last long at all, man. Great six-man tag team match to end the show. It was great, man. Great, great, great wrestling all the way around. And also coming up this week, shout-out to my guy Juan Marlowe. We, we predicted on the podcast last week between um, the Fatal Five-Way match. We said it's going to come down to Drew and Sheamus and how they were going to do it. Why, why did the other referee need to get in the ring to count one, two, three? Why the other referee couldn't just stay outside the ring and do his job, though? You feel me? If one referee is in the ring count one, two, three, it's not no need for you to get in the ring and count one, two, three. Now you're causing a whole big old commotion snap. So now these two's got to go off and fight. And whoever wins is going to take on Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. Yeah, I said WrestleMania. <laughs> it's going down, man. It's, it's, it's definitely uh, going down. All the things coming up. A lot of big, big wrestling events also 
uh, Supercard, Ring of Honor. Um, they also announced it that the um, Forbidden Door 2 is coming back this June, you guys. It's going to be in Toronto. So that's going to be awesome, man. Big, big events coming up, man. Really big events coming up. Man, it's been a great, great show. Talking some pro wrestling, man. Um, I had a guest. I had my guy Gator Laugh. He was going to be joining me here. Uh, he has some issues, man. Definitely had some issues that he ran into. Um, but, yo, shout out to my guy, Gator Live. You know, I can always talk pro wrestling anytime, man. Anytime of the day. But, you guys, man, the next episode of Talk Pro Wrestling will be live, man. Wednesday, Commission Talks. We back at it. We got the boys, Juan Marlo, Earth the Joker, and more. We going at it strong. So let's go, man. Shout out to the guys. They killed it this week. I took a week off. Had some things I had to do. But once again, man, shout out to the guys and keep killing it, man. For real. Great show. Before I head on out of here, don't forget to follow The 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at The 1130 Podcast. Like The 1130 Podcast on Facebook. If you haven't done so this entire episode, man, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, follow me on TikTok. Instagram at the 1130 podcast underscore and also appreciate everyone for tuning in to the live episode of beyond 1130 you guys this past week and if you haven't checked it out go check it out man for real also check out this week's episode of the podcast show the 1130 podcast show and yo man tune in to uh good pods man if you're listening your podcast on good pods follow the 1130 podcast talk pro wrestling on a good pods man for real i'm about to get on out of here I'm thirsty. <laughs> uh, for real. Yo, it's been a great one. Shout out to everyone who, who listen and support, man. For real. Yo, the podcast link uh, for the merch is down below. Cop it. Get at it, man. Appreciate you guys. Support all the way, man. Yo, it's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. Stay safe. Stay blessed, man. Give all the glory to God. Until next time, I'm out.